I want to take back some things that I said in some earlier videos. I suggested that we shouldn't really be very concerned over whether or not we're considered normal. You know, I do think it's important that we try to work at viewing ourselves in a positive light for the things that we're not considered normal for, for the things about us that are different from the norm. I mean, it's a good thing to look past social pressures. But if we want to talk about why those social pressures are there, we kind of have to get to the root of the problem, which would be neophobia. Neophobia is the fear or dislike of new ideas, new phenomena, new approaches to problems, and so on. It has been a while since I talked about neophobes and neophiles. Neophiles are those that tend to gravitate towards new ideas, new phenomena, new approaches to problems, and so on. Now, neophiles have a tendency to gravitate away from older ideas, even if they're better ideas. But the right wing tends to be neophobic, and the left wing tends to be neophilic. Not always, but usually. It's the reason why some people with certain types of thinking patterns gravitate towards the right and others gravitate towards the left. Right-wingers have a tendency to make fun of, I mean, when they make fun of people anyway, have a tendency to make fun of people for uh, behaviors, mannerisms, and fashion senses that are not in the statistical norm. Anyone who journeys outside of normal or professional standards can expect to either be ridiculed for those things or to be treated as less than for those things. Oh, look, it's a lady with blue hair. She's going to say something really stupid. Or, oh, look, that guy has a nose ring. He must not have anything valid to say. Yeah, you know, Nothing he says is going to be worth anything. And what do you want to bet that every time in comments here on YouTube, every time someone has had a major problem with my nose ring and they, they don't want to pay attention to what I'm saying be because of this, that they're right-wingers. Yeah, every single time. And I've been on this platform for over 10 years. Every single time. On the other side, people who are really, really liberal, or really, really on the left, you know, in the context of what it is, let's say, in the United States, will treat those who are mundane or traditional as if they're less than for it. As if they're just brainwashed and not very intelligent. And assume that's why the people can't step outside the box for much of anything, or they assume they can't step outside the box for much of anything. They might step outside the box for a lot of things, but, you know, based on appearances, they automatically make assumptions. I mean, obviously, neither one of these types of things is a good thing. But they exist because of neophilia and neophobia. Music, art, fashion, dance, whatever it may be, creative people are often made fun of by right-wingers for being creative and non-standard. That is, until said creator goes viral and becomes very popular. And then some of those same right-wingers who made fun of them before will start to like them. And sometimes they'll even try to pretend that they, they've always liked them. Oh, we love diversity as long as it's normal and standard. That's just how it is most of the time. I mean, that's why when it comes to music, right-wingers tend to, I'm not saying all right-wingers, and none of this is an all kind of situation, but, you know, this is why most of the time right-wingers tend to cling towards uh, country and blues. I mean, those are styles that haven't changed for over 35 years, really. No significant changes to them. I mean, rock is almost the same way. Rock hasn't really changed for over 20 years, so... You know, but as long as you have your reliable staple, where people express themselves in predictable ways and have predictable lyrics, you know, where it's about the way someone hits all the predictable notes, rather than the notes that they're actually hitting. If the medium becomes too unpredictable, it's no longer enjoyable. 
to people with this kind of mindset, right? It's all about the things you know rather than the things that you don't know. And according to this train of thought, good artists know how to work within those frameworks. But at least since the 1950s, it's always been the left that stood up for the unusual, the abnormal, the weird, the creative. And over the past decade, people on the right have wanted to rebrand conservatism to the masses to appear as if it's all about diversity. But it just takes a little bit of digging to see that, yeah, it's, it's diversity as long as it's normal. Something standard. Something from, you know, 20 or 30 years ago. That's why they get so upset over when people try to normalize things that aren't necessarily statistically normal, but, uh, you know, they're, they're trying to show, hey, yeah, we're, we're people too, you know? That's why they get upset over the normalization of LGBT or black culture and a number of other things. Now, granted, I, I understand people being disgruntled with their constantly being token minorities just shoved into different parts of our, inter our entertainment for, for no good reason. There's, there's, no, there's no reason for some of these token characters to even be there. They're just doing it because, oh, we'll get some diversity points, right? So, so I get it. I, I get it. But, you know, sometimes you see people on the right trying to focus on all the negative things that they possibly can about those demographics so they don't really have to look at them as equals. Or, or they'll try to pretend that the things that make those demographics different don't actually exist. Now, granted, the latter is much preferred over the former. And they'll accept unusual people if they toe the conservative line. They'll have to say the right opinions. This way, conservatives can point and say, see, see, we're a diverse group of people. You know, so I think of people like, you know, Milo Yiannopoulos. Well, if, if Milo would have been on the left, he would have been someone the right would have been making fun of. Now, again, let me state that nothing I'm talking about here is an all sort of situation. No, it's not all. It's not all. It may not even be most. But it's enough that it's worth mentioning. Now, obviously, I'm a neophile. That doesn't make me better or superior in any way. We need people who are happy to work with things that are tested and tried. I mean, we can't just survive purely off new ideas. There has to be some ideas that stick and get worked with. We need to critique new ideas. Not every new idea is a good idea. There are some really shitty new ideas. Sometimes really old ideas work best. But, you know, I really did want to say, and I guess I didn't say it as well as I should have, but, uh, but I, I wanted to say that, you know, not being considered normal still does have a lot of stigma attached to it. And I should be more empathetic to those who are really struggling with it. I mean, I struggled with it to a degree, but I've always enjoyed being creative and silly and all of that sort of thing. And I mean, perhaps I've let society get to me more in recent years than I did before. You know, perhaps the current me could learn some things from the younger me, you know? But uh, just because I was able to get past some of the negative things associated with being different, it doesn't mean everyone else has. Well, anyway, thanks for watching.